Hi, my name is Antonio Rodriguez. I work as a principal generative AI solutions architect in Amazon Web Services, part of the Amazon Bedrock Go to Market team. And today I'm excited to talk to you about DeepSeek and how you can use it in a fully managed or serverless way in Amazon Bedrock. First of all, let's talk a little bit about DeepSeek. DeepSeek R1 is the model uh, that is now available in Amazon Bedrock through different ways, in the Bedrock Marketplace, uh, through the Bedrock Custom Model Import, and now we are also having it as a fully managed serverless model in Amazon Bedrock. That means that you can leverage the power of the reasoning capabilities that we have in the DeepSeek R1 model through a single API that we call the Converse API in Amazon Bedrock or directly through the Invoke Model API. And you can also use it in the console so that you can, in example, test it out in the playground and uh, use complex reasoning prompts with this model that is uh, able to, let's say, exceed in those specific capabilities that require more reasoning and uh, that require some uh, mathematical thinking, coding, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one of the advantages that uh, you have when you have a fully managed or serverless model in Amazon Bedrock is that you don't have to deal with the complexity of the infrastructure that is behind. You don't have to worry about any endpoints that you have to deploy. You don't have to worry about the scaling concerns or anything like that. We take care of that for you. So that the only thing that you have to do is invoke the model through the APIs or through the UI, and then those requests are automatically fulfilled for you. Now, obviously, this also means that you have all the enterprise grade security, monitoring, and cost control features that we normally have in Amazon Bedrock. And that also means that you can use the tooling, like an example, um, use Amazon Bedrock guardrails for protecting uh, against the prompts and the outputs that you could be having from the models and so on and so forth. The most important thing is that you always maintain complete control over your data. And that also means that we don't share any kind of data with the model provider. All the data remains only private for you to use and in your environments. Now, if we list what will be the benefits of using reasoning models like DeepSeek R1 and how to use it in Bedrock for the right use cases, we will say that these five benefits summarize uh, what, what are uh, the important factors. One of them, obviously, is that the model uh, shows exceptional reasoning capabilities. And as I said before, this is uh, especially relevant when you have some intelligent decision support that you have to do, code generation that is a complicated scientific or mathematical analysis that require the models to make calculations that are more advanced. And of course, uh, working with data, analyzing data, crunching data, and combining these with your enterprise knowledge as well. Now, you get all of these in a very cost-effective way. And uh, that cost-effective way is, uh, again, thanks to the serverless way that we are exposing the model so that you can actually pay per token, so that you pay only for the tokens that you are consuming in the inputs and the outputs uh, to the model. The other thing is that, uh, again, all the output that you are getting from the model actually shows the reasoning that the model is doing. So that helps you a lot with advanced techniques, like an example, when you are doing advanced code, code generation. And uh, everything is protected by the tooling that we mentioned before, like an example, by combining with Amazon Bedrock guardrails and at an enterprise scale performance. So that you can make sure that you can fulfill all the requests that you could be having for your end users or for your internal customers. Now, let's watch a demo on how to use uh, DeepSeek in the console. And for that, you simply have to go to the Amazon Bedrock console. And now, if you go to the model catalog, you will see that now we have DeepSeek as a yet another option in the serverless way. So before, we have it in, as a marketplace deployment options in the distilled models and the flagship DeepSeek R1 model. Now you have this one, which is actually the full 671 billion parameters model available as a serverless model that you can directly use uh, in Amazon Bedrock. Here you can check the model card. Obviously, you have to provide access to the model for get, uh, starting using it in the regions where the model is available. And then you can see all the details, like an example, where are the maximum tokens that are supported in the inputs? In this case, is 128K. Where are the main languages that it support? That is English and Chinese, among other languages that are supported, let's say, um, with less data or less accuracy overall in the responses. And then you can even see examples of the API requests and the format that you can have. And very importantly, you can read the end user license agreement for this model so that you can uh, check any details that you might want to see uh, for onboarding the model and getting started. 
Now let's assume that you are ready to use the model in the playground. All you have to do is just click on open in playground and this will show you uh, that playground directly where you can actually select a uh, deep cigar one and you can define the inference parameters in example the temperature and the top uh, p also the maximum tokens that you want in the outputs this model is able to get up to uh, 32k in the output tokens that it can support uh, for uh, composing the answers that it gets uh, for you now Let's watch a couple of examples on how, why the reasoning capabilities in DeepSeq are differentiated and, uh, and why are they important. So let's take a first example use case if we want to do an investment optimization. So let's imagine now that we are working in a financial services company and let's say that we have the following statement. We say an investor allocates $10,000 between two investments. Investment X is returning with 8% risk factor 6, investment Y 12% risk factor 9, the risk tolerance required here is an average risk factor that less than uh, 7.5. Find the allocation that maximizes the return. This is obviously a problem that is quite complex uh, for solving with an LLM. So here we will actually see why the reasoning models are um, showcasing capabilities that allow us to solve this kind of problem. So I'm going to paste here the prompt that we just saw, and we simply run it. And the first thing that you will note is that actually DeepSeq is showing us clearly the reasoning that it's doing. So you see that actually the model is exposing some behavior in natural language that is very similar to how a human will think about the problem. So it says, all right, let me try to figure out this investment plan. It uh, starts by defining some variables that we have in the problem. Then it actually starts making some mathematical calculations as you can see there. Eventually it's doing some substitutions that it requires it makes a self-analysis on the answers that it's getting. If it's needed, it actually changes its mind, it tests different alternatives, et cetera, et cetera. And actually it finds out that this is a linear programming problem uh, that has two variables and then it starts solving the linear programming problem. So as you can see, this is a very complex uh, mathematical reasoning that we have here that is done automatically by the model uh, during its reasoning. Now, if you see, it also says things like an example, let me just think if there is another angle. So it will always look for a solution that is more optimal for the problem that you're posing. And when it's uh, sufficiently confident of the answer that it's getting, it will return a final answer. You can see that the reasoning was shown uh, in a specific section of the answer. And now we have this uh, more bold uh, output that is actually the final response that the model is giving. And then we get the final answer is that actually the investor should allocate $5,000 to investment X and $5,000 to investment Y, resulting in a maximum return of uh, $1,000 in this example. We can also collapse here uh, this output uh, for the reasoning in example if we don't want to see the reasoning and we only care about the final answer and we can work from there. So as you can see, uh, this is a quite uh, advanced uh, way of working. We could see other examples. In example, let's say that we are working in a delivery route minimization. We want to do an optimization problem in this case where we actually have a logistic and transportation company. Let's say that we have a delivery truck that now must visit four locations in sequence, right? And we are providing the distances from the locations there. And let's say that we are starting and ending at a warehouse uh, called A, and we have to find the route that actually minimizes the total distance that our delivery truck is driving. So this is, again, a problem that requires uh, a level of complexity in the reasoning. We can, once again, copy and paste the prompt here, and then check how uh, DeepSeq is actually reasoning for solving the problem. So here it says, OK, I need to figure out the shortest possible route for the delivery truck that starts and ends at the warehouse A, and so on and so forth. You can see that at some point it's actually taking some assumptions. In example, if it's uh, not completely sure about uh, one of the data, you can clearly see in the reasoning how it is taking the assumptions for solving the problem. So you might, in example, adjust your prompts later for making sure that it's understanding the data in the right way. And uh, you can also have a full explainability of the decisions that it's doing, which is very important if you are, in example, in a regulated environment or in an industry where you are actually required to explain why uh, you are taking some automated decisions in any system. So here, as you can see, he's uh, verifying uh, some of the assumptions that he's taking and some of the calculations that he's doing. He's doing more reasoning for defining the different routes that he has to take uh, overall. 
and then eventually you get a final answer. In this case, it says um, that these are uh, the rules that it should take uh, to minimize the total distance. So it gives uh, two possible sequences. Both of them have a total distance of 39 kilometers. Now, awesome. We have seen how to use uh, and how to solve very complex uh, reasoning problems and mathematical optimization problems using DeepSigar1 in the Amazon Bedrock console. But you can also do it programmatically. And the nice thing is that actually, if you go to our code samples, you will see that actually it's as simple as setting up our Boto3 client, which is the way in which we interact with Amazon Bedrock in a programmatic way, in this case, using Python in my example. So I just set up my client and now I have a new model ID that is called DeepSigar1 v10. And that model, as you can see, is showing me here all the details about what is supported, what is not supported, and so on and so forth. I have a list of prompts here um, that we can use uh, for testing. And then you will see that we are simply using the Converse API of Amazon Bedrock. Converse API is a unified way of invoking any of the models that we have in Amazon Bedrock so that we can actually uh, provide in a very universal and, and simple uh, syntax in the request an output that is um, of high quality for all of the models that we have. You will see that we are passing some inference configuration parameters, like an example, I'm defining that the maximum tokens have to be 30,000 tokens in the output, and I'm actually setting a temperature of one. You could uh, check and, and change this to whatever you want. You can also play with the system prompt. In example, I'm just saying you are a helpful assistant. But uh, in example, here you will be defining a role that will be very important for working with DeepSeek. In example, if you want to provide any uh, geographic or geopolitical situation to the models, uh, so that is aware that is, in example, solving a problem for a company that is based in US or Europe or anything like that, you can also do so, so that it's not uh, giving any responses that might be biased against the training data that it has. Now, in this case, uh, I'm asking, in example, a very simple uh, challenge here, which is I'm providing a problem, right? A man has 33 socks in his drawer, 21 identical blue, 15 identical black, 17 identical red. Likes us are out, and we are completely in the dark. How many socks we have to take out to make 100% certain that he has at least one pair of black socks? Only answer with the number of socks he takes out. And in this case, I'm actually printing the full output that you get with the Converse API because I want you to see uh, something that is very important. I'm going to show uh, this in a better format so, so it's easier to read it. Um, but the first thing is that in the output, we now have two components. So again, we have one component that is the final answer. So the model is actually saying, okay, the answer is 40. Why? Because I was asking originally only answer with the number of socks, right? So it's actually saying, okay, you need 40 for solving this. Now. In another component of the output, you actually have the reasoning content. So actually, you can see how the model is reasoning against the problem. So in the same way that we saw before, we can actually see how the model is thinking the problem, approaching the problem, defining the data, taking assumptions, and so on and so forth. So you can parse any piece of the output that you actually uh, care for so that you can connect that to your applications in a programmatic way in a very simple and easy way. You can also see, obviously, all the, all the metrics that are related to latency, inputs, outputs, and so on and so forth. Now, coming back to our example, what happens if we need something that is actually used in streaming? So we can also use the Converse Stream API. The only thing that we have to change is actually the format, the, the, the API action that we are calling. Instead of Converse, we are calling Converse Stream. And uh, actually, the way that we read the output, because uh, now we are reading the output in chunks, so that we can actually print the output in pieces, uh, so that we uh, imitate an, uh, uh, somebody writing uh, behind the answer, right? So in this case, I'm going to, again, uh, run this against a prompt that I have uh, uh, loaded. And uh, you can see how, in example, I'm giving a clinical trial test treatment for choosing between three uh, potential treatments and, uh, and a placebo. And I want, in example, to check what is the most effective treatment that we have. And you can see how the model is actually in streaming thinking. So it's writing here all the thinking in the same way that we saw it in the playground before. And eventually, it's going to calculate all the uh, probabilities of success of each one of the three treatments that I'm offering here. And then it's going to decide what is the uh, treatment that is actually providing the best chance. And as you can see, I'm showing the thinking again uh, in, in color green, while I have the final answer in color white. So you can actually see that the final answer is actually the conclusion that treatment C, in this case, is the most effective according to all the metrics that it has. 
All right, so with these, I hope that you uh, get use of the model. And uh, of course, as usual, check the documentation, check all the assets that we have prepared for you. And thank you for watching.